Aloha. Welcome to Return on Wellness, a web series brought to you by Olympian Meeting. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Return on Wellness, brought to you by Olympian Meetings. I have two guests in this episode. Normally, it's just one-on-one, but um, scheduling is, you know, people have things going on. They have lives, but I appreciate both these lovely ladies for uh, joining me today. They're also friends. Um, I have Lori Sharp and Janine. I always mispronounce your last name for some reason. Got it, Cliff. Janine Cliff. Yep. (laughs) And uh, we're going to jump into introductions. And then um, this is... This is going to be a little different of an episode in the sense that um, some of the other episodes have been very literal and um, and uh, let's call it sciency. Um, and uh, this one is going to it's not that it's going to be any less important, but it's definitely going to take a different perspective. So let's let's start with um, this. It's the other side of the coin, right? Wellness is different things, to different people. And so we're going to we're going to talk uh, a little more um, about the other side of the coin instead of the one I've mostly talked about, which is for me, which is a very, we discussed this actually before. They are both left-handed and I am right-handed. <laughs> so there, there, that's it. I'm not going to describe Enough anymore. Said. Janine, you want to go first? You want to introduce sure. yourself? Um, just tell us your name and, and not, you can use your title at your professional job, but as we discussed before, this is about people interactions, not what you do as a job and how that defines you. I love it. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Um, So I'm Janine Cliff. I am with Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts is my corporate job where I work. And I help book meetings and events into our hotels around the world. Um, My client base is based here in Northern California. And then I am also a practitioner. I have a energy healing and channeled practitioner um, private practice that I do outside of my corporate job. Okay. Awesome. And Lori? Hi, thanks for having me. Of, of course. Um, and it's super nice to be here with Janine as well, because we have a, a little bit of wellness history together. So um, I have been in uh, event marketing, in the, primarily in the tech world, for about 20 plus years. I won't go any farther than that. <laughs> and um, I have run global event marketing teams uh, for about 12 years of my career, and also on the agency side for another 10 years. So. Uh, that is my day-to-day life. Um, I'm the mother of a 19-year-old daughter. That is a different job. <laughs> and then, uh, last but not least, I am co-founder of a blog called Bubbles and Buddha, which addresses wellness, provides an insights to different modalities for people who may not have some of those insights, um, both for event marketers who should be focusing on taking care of ourselves, but also resources that they can use to bring in for their audiences. Um, and it's it's really just a, a passion project. Awesome, I love it. Um, so before we got started, we were we were discussing. Um, there's a term. I don't even want to say it now because I don't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> um, but it's it's out there. It exists. Um, I'm going to use the term. I'm going to actually go a little further back with the term because I think that version is the current version. But the term hippy dippy. You've probably heard that, that mm-hmm. got used to you, that people used to use that back in the day. Um, I think one of the things that I wanted to make sure we covered on this series was the fact that how important your, your being and who you are and your mind and your spirit, and this isn't religious. I think there's a strong difference there between religious and being spiritual. Um, when I brought up the, the, the WW word, um, I said, is it okay if I use it? And you had very strong opinions about it. And as as we're all working towards, let's call it enlightenment and just being more receptive to different things. And, mm-hmm. and I don't wanna say tolerant because I feel like that gives almost a negative connotation, like I'll let it exist, um, which I guess is a step in the right direction for some people. <laughs> um, but when when you throw out those terms it can it can upset people because they're in a different place than you are so um janine i'd love for you to to kind of dig into your thoughts on it and then laura you had some thoughts about it as well so we're gonna go with um is that is that sure. version a better version because it's older or was it a worse version hippy I mean, dippy whatever you want to use <laughs> okay. like either, right. either one i guess um well why why don't you like that like my, well my my question is um 
your reaction. Um, one of the things I learned uh, two episodes ago was that when you're within three feet of someone, you're exchanging electromagnetic fields. And I felt it immediately when I used that term. I was like, no, she hates that term. <laughs> Well, that was how I interpreted it, but I knew that you didn't like it. I got bad vibes immediately. So what is it about the term that, mm. that bothers you yeah. about it? Well, I think that's a great example of what you just brought up about this electric field that you, you know, um, energetically feel, right? Because um, this differentiation, first of all, between science and spirituality or science and the woo-woo, they're really okay, you said it this time. That's not my really, fault. I, <laughs> it. I heard it too. There really isn't that big of a difference, to be honest, because when, just to backtrack for a second about what you had said, um, you know, energy work is, is your quantum field. It's exactly what you picked mm -hmm. up on. Um, there's science that will back all of it. So um, I think when we use the term woo-woo, it tends to negate that piece and it makes it a little too um, fluffy or um, not real. Dismissive? Dismissive, yeah. I think it can dilute what the actual work of the practitioner is doing. So um, I understand why people use it or sort of the terms. It's, it's like it's such an ambiguous concept sometimes, these modalities in wellness, that people go to, oh, it's just woo-woo. Um, but I think it does a disservice to the field, and I think it does a disservice to wellness, because these are practitioners that have studied a craft in such a deep, meaningful way. And I think it speaks a little bit to when we use that word that maybe someone doesn't quite understand what it is. And I would. Um, that's usually why people use. No, I would those totally terms. say yeah. that's why someone uses. <laughs> that yeah, word. and I would encourage people to to maybe not use that as a blanket statement, you know, and really give credence to um, the craft and to the modality and to the work of what it actually is, right? So, you know, if you had a scientist that you didn't necessarily know much about neuroscience, but you're not going to say, oh, it's woo-woo because I know nothing about it, right? It's still a, it's still a legitimate study. Right. Um, so I, I would love us to get away from these kind of generic terms of woo-woo, guru, things like that, um, and really call it for what it is. You know, these are, these are practitioners that are doing deep healing work for people. And uh, I think the more we are able to use the language that, that speaks to it appropriately, then it will become more respected and become more understood. And, um, and it really does have a much stronger science backing than, than people realize. It's kind of like if someone called you a party planner. <laughs> Same reaction. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and you were talking about the fact that um, you said you were discussing this last night at dinner? Um, yeah, I think, or, was I think I've heard people, you know, people have said that to me, right? Oh, that's, that seems like, because within our blog, we put things out there that are so a lot of people may not have tried or had exposure to, right? Um, and so people were kind of like, well, what, what, did, what is that? You know, crystals or whatever. You, name, you fill in the blank, right? Go to Sedona and it was, it's overwhelming. Right. And, but I think, uh, you know, my philosophy around wellness is everyone has a separate path and you have to find your path. What I eat for breakfast doesn't work for you. Um, you know, the exercise I do is not for you or vice versa. Like it's all very, into, but you need to try different modalities different diets until you get where you feel like I'm in my spot. This is where I am. And that takes, for me, it took a long time, but I feel like I'm there now. Um, but that takes a longer time. And I think, you know, people do sit, use that word out of uh, fear, ignorance, lack of knowledge. And I do agree with Janine 100%. I mean, you know, the quantum energy. I mean, there was a there was an article in Time magazine in, I believe, February, April about quantum computing. You take a look at that. That is based on everything in this universe is based on energy. So to think that people who are working with energy healing, it's it's all interconnected. It's just the way it is. Um, call it what you like, but there is no getting away from that. And the sooner you kind of embrace that and start to learn more of how that impacts you and everything in our world, it's it just kind of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very much multi-layered, right? I mean, we have a physical body, we have the thinking mind, we have a heart, which science has now shown that that's our second brain. 
I would argue to say it's our first spring. <laughs> we have we have our people bags. usually tend to think with well with that. <laughs> That's a different topic. Sometimes first, <laughs> yeah. and and they say you know follow your heart, mm -hmm. and because your brain will usually talk you out of it. We also have our gut, right? And there's so much more that's come out on gut health, which is so science science based. Mm -hmm. um, and your gut is also your intuition. That's where your intuition sits. And how many times have we had a hit where we say, "Oh, that I knew it. I knew it, but I ignored it." And then, sure enough, that hit was the right way to go. It, so we have all these little idiosyncrasies uh, that are a part of us that are, in my perspective, the big umbrella of what wellness means, right? So fitness, taking care of our body is so important. What we put in our body nutrition-wise is so important. Right. The vessel that holds the, um, the, the energetic body, the soft body that we have is so important as well because if that's unhealthy, we're not able to hold energetically. And what's great about technology that's coming out now too is there's so much technology that can actually measure this now, whereas we didn't have it before. So it did sound woo-woo and it did sound so out there, but now for the people who are very much more, you know, the left-brained, yeah, um, and need the facts and need the science, the technology is, is there and catching up to be able to show that. And so I think what's the beautiful thing about wellness right now is like you said, Lori, it's not one size fits all. And one thing doesn't necessarily gravitate to somebody else, but it's such a vast umbrella now that um, it's a really exciting time to bring in, we've talked about this, like modern technology with ancient wisdom and the ancient wisdom practices that are now coming back to Who the Who knew surface. they work? And you know, they worked thousands Might of years that's, ago. They're ancient wisdom. By the way, we talked and about clipping out. things. That was yeah. a fantastic soundbite. <laughs> Modern technology with ancient wisdom. I love it. Yeah. Yes, and that is what is happening right now, and that is mm -hmm. the call. We have the most incredible technology that we could do full body scans, right, to detect precancer in your body. You could, there's private sectors that are doing incredible work with technology. And there's also ancient wisdom or practices with some of our hotels are bringing it in back in, you know, with um, um, Temescal and these ancient heat um, ways to do the saunas and bringing in the local shamans and the wisdom that they have and the prayers and the, the spirituality behind that and not in a religious way, right? But um, it's, and, and these modalities were working for us thousands of years ago. We all know how to do it. We all are intuitive. We all can work with our own energy. We've just forgotten how to do it because we've been trained to be so much in our mind with the gadgets and with the thinking and everything else that we've forgotten how to connect to this and connect to this and have it all flow. Mm -hmm. And once we're able to connect to all of that, that's when you're bringing in this ancient knowing of your gut and your intuition and then also this wisdom that technology has. And you can bridge that together it's like, it's a beautiful thing to have I that. think that the challenges for our colleagues, whatever role they play within the events, hospitality industry, that's a lot. Uh, because we tend to be the worst offenders in terms of that holistic approach. We, we are the worst. We are, I don't have time. What do you mean, Janine? I got up at six. I had to get to the hotel at five. You know, whatever it is. Like, I, was, I ran all day and then I got to feed my kid. Like and worry about my what I'm eating. Well, so we just we just talked about this and I was I was asking a, a previous guest, how do we break the martyrdom cycle <laughs> that meeting planners have? And we, we did also discuss it is it might be something that is fairly unique to the United States because in Europe there are, you know, I sent an, I, when I, when I had a team member who was in Germany I sent them an email and it was like the middle of the day, my time, West Coast time. And um, their supervisor was was on it and they replied back to me. They're like, you don't expect a response, do you? And I'm like, well, tomorrow maybe. Because I understood that they, they don't have quiet quitting in Europe because they all have boundaries. <laughs> um, but the, the, I was like, no, like they'll respond tomorrow. Like I'm working, uh, it's my time to work right now and it's an asynchronous email. Oh, well, okay. And I was like, wow, do we, what kind of reputation do we have? And I think it's a unique problem. And I said, how do we, how do we shake this martyrdom complex we have? 
you and I've had that conversation a few times. I think that's why you're back. Um, <laughs> I, I think part of it, and I'll just speak from my perspective, is you know, I'm a people pleaser. It's always everyone before me. I've really had to work and learn that self care has immense value for me and everyone I'm around. And that is, you know, you, you kind of break that f frenetic cycle, right? Because I feel like we, you know, we get in those cycles of boom, 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 boom yeah, Twitter, Slack, email. I, like it's just on every device you can imagine. I have, you know, 84 channels running, like, and you're like, yeah, look at me. I did, I did multitask all this stuff. I'm a badass. Why are we proud of that? Right. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, so versus being proud of, you know, I did a great job. I stopped doing that. I spent time with my family. I didn't touch my devices. And I'm a well-balanced human being. Yeah. Most of the time. And that's what we need to get to, right? I mean, there, wellness is also, it's individual, it's personal, and it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. it doesn't, just because, you know, we are following that path, we are just as flawed. We're just focusing on different mm -hmm. things that we think, again, will work for us. And I think that's what everybody should do you know, take a baby step is my mantra. Take a baby step in helping yourself and putting yourself first. And what ultimately you realize when you take that moment to breathe and focus on yourself, you actually have more room to be creative, to support your team, to support your family, or, you know, again, fill in the blank of what's important to you. But when you're in that, you know, hamster wheel, you can't see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think too, as as meeting planners, event planners, putting on events, head of marketing, you know, um, I think we have a really unique opportunity here to actually show and provide a platform for attendees to experience that, to in the content, right? So to actually maybe flip it on its head and create something that's a little bit more of a retreat feel. I mean, I've I. I've done, you know, we've done eight um, wellness retreats with with Four Seasons and and curated different types of um, agendas in there where you actually program the wellness pieces in there so that people do have this time to decompress and actually let their nervous system calm down and feel what it feels like. Not be told like you should be doing this, or you should be doing this, but actually embody what it feels like to slow down and then also giving it a little bit of um you know i think once you actually experience that that's when the light bulb goes off that's when the aha moment goes mm -hmm. off of like oh right i actually that's when i got more creative to your point well, that's when i problem for, i'll just point out that just listening to Janine talk slows me down and <laughs> centers me because you have such a lovely voice oh thank you uh, do you find it any different on because we have we have hotels and planner right we are supplier buyer i hate those terms we're all partners with each other we live partners, and die partners. we live and die by each other um do you find it any different on the hotel side that people are making for time for themselves or maybe not because at the same time you're also in the sales side where it is go 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 numbers 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 etc mm. or do you do you find yourself having actually that really in common with planners who feel constantly overwhelmed. Yeah, I think 100% in common. Mm -hmm. I think the, the hotel industry is some of the hardest working people I've ever come across. Um, you know, I think it's the same type of industry where you're looking for perfection, things things really can fall through the tra cracks quickly and it's all about how do you recover from it. Um, but I think that it really, the foundation of the culture is so important, right? And so I feel really, really lucky that to work for a company where the culture very much supports this idea of um, empowering yourself and taking care of yourself and um, giving back to your family. And that's definitely something that's really at the forefront. Um, is it perfect? No, you know, because we all, everyone who gets hired are hired based off of this exactly what Lori, Lori was saying of this desire to do the best they possibly can mm -hmm. do. I had a, um, years and years ago, I had a session with somebody who was intuitive and he said to me, you know, you know what you're doing? 
every time someone asks you to do something, you're pouring, um, if someone asks you to fill up a glass of water and give them a glass of water, you're not just pouring the water in the glass, but you're like pouring it, it's overflowing, it's spilling all over the floor, it's like there's a puddle, <laughs> and you're like, here's your water, and the person's like, I just I just needed a glass of water, like I didn't need a puddle, you know, and, and he had said to me, I would like you to experiment with backing up a little bit, and I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, because then everything's going to fall apart. And I did, and I and it was the most uncomfortable thing I'd ever done because it was not my way of working. And I did a little bit by little bit, and I started to retrain myself and retrain my nervous system and retrain the way I think of like, you know what? Everything still remained the same. And then something magical happened. I started to realize that I was actually becoming more productive by filling less water in the glass and more things were becoming aligned by doing less. But that goes kind of to the conversation we had around boundaries, right? Yeah. And I think perhaps uh, the younger generation may be slightly better at that than we are. Um, but it is about setting boundaries to a certain extent. And again, I think we all have the fear like, well, if I'm not there 24 seven, it'll all fall mm -hmm. apart or something will happen. And it, it might not. Yeah, and I think we're also empowering someone else to step into right th that place too. I, I, what you said really resonated with me because that was a hundred percent me pre-pandemic. Um, for every everybody who hates red dots on their phones, because you're like, oh, I gotta get it, I gotta clear that notification, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I, that constant need of reaction, um, which led to. Uh, some people not being super big fans of me internally because of my tone, because my MO at the time was, I'm gonna respond to you. I'm, you're always gonna get an answer immediately. You may not like it because it's gonna be three words as I'm, no, we can't, while I'm on the plane <laughs> and, and before Wi-Fi was a thing. And the, the pandemic really helped me slow way down. And I found Didn't that- have a choice. Yeah, well, <laughs> for a little bit. But I, I also found that I was, we got our team got way more creative. We came up with better solutions. Mm -hmm. We we were able to take care of more people because we were just more effective. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, I like how we open this. This yeah, was. I, I, I do want to ask one more question because both of you said it. I'm naive to the to the term. You both said modalities, mm. and I'm kind of a dumb knuckle dragon monkey so can you explain well, we to me may have different we may have different versions oh. of how we well, well I, that too. I felt like you understood each other no no it's, yeah. we, I, it, we mean yeah, the same thing do. but yeah. i mean for me you know m modalities you know are uh, the different options to choose your path to wellness okay different methods um or different modes if you will of of a wellness journey mm -hmm. Yeah, modalities to me is um, sort of a catch-all phrase that helps to, so for instance, um, you know, within, if you have four pillars, let's say, of wellness, if say you have nutrition, um, body, mind, um, maybe five, spirituality and sleep, right? And under those pillars are going to be different things that, categories. Right. So if we take mind, for instance, um, modalities would be, you know, if you wanted to work on um, meditation or if you wanted to do um, energy healing, if you wanted to do visualization, if you wanted to do hypnosis, if you wanted to do an art therapy session, if you wanted to do um, past life regression, if you wanted to, you know, those are all different, different modalities. We'll do that next. <laughs> and that's, um, that's kind of the catch phrase of the modality. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, um, something that I've, I think when I, when I've gotten the opportunity to speak, I kind of can come across as I, I, a little intense, and people think that I might just be there to tell people that they need to work out more, because that's kind of what I'm known for. <laughs> but, that, but right. I but mean, it is on your LinkedIn profile. You know, I, <laughs> to be fair, I, I competed and you I won right. an award I, five times as in a row. You should. Yeah, so. Of um, but uh, yeah, I, I, one of the things that's really important though is the, the fact that wellness is really an inclusive thing and it means different things to yeah. different people. Mm -hmm. um, and one of, the, one of the things I really love, um, I wore a, a shirt from the, the company I do my, my workout programming from, is they, they have a, it's a black shirt and across the front of it, it says nothing and it has a line through it. 
And the idea is that something is always better than nothing. And I love it because it's so simple. And sure, they're talking about physical fitness, but it, it, it spans the, the entire board on modalities because if you're doing something for yourself, mm -hmm. you're doing the right thing. Yeah, and I think there are so many people, especially in our industry, who haven't started the journey or are afraid to start the journey. And, you know, again, I think it can seem overwhelming when we're, what are you doing for your brain? What are you doing for your heart? What are you doing? Like, what are you doing for your bot? Like all of those things, like, I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you pick something that you personally feel is your biggest pain point or challenge and it's baby steps again. You do one mm -hmm. thing. Um, you know, what's the saying? Every every journey starts with just one step, and that's absolutely true. And there's no judgment. Right. Again, that that word that we used before that implies judgment. That she said repeatedly. No, 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 she did. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she did. But it, it implies judgment. And I think you know we, we all have biases, and we all judge things in life. And I think it comes from that judgment. And I think you know something that I've learned in this, you know long process is that like hey again like i'm not going to judge what you do if it's working for you why why do i care yeah and i love that you said that you start with something small right and i would say your breath your breath is we all have it it's very easy to access it's important it's very important <laughs> it's you do it without even thinking but what we tend to do is we have shallow breathing especially when we're stressed or we hold our breath and we don't even realize we're holding mm -hmm. it, right? So that's an amazing place to start of just with your breath. If you're sitting at your computer and you know you take those deep breaths, you take them deep into your belly and you just take five minutes and it actually resets your nervous system. And there is science behind that mm -hmm. too um, that, can, that can show you exactly what's happening yeah. if you're that type of person to understand what is happening physically in my body when I take these deep breaths. You know what group of people that's very unexpected practice breathing? The Navy SEALs. Oh, I was going to say. That's, I was going to guess that. Yeah. Dang it. I you should have guessed it. it. Yeah. <laughs> the, like, uh, they call it box breathing. Mm -hmm. um, you've yeah. probably heard of it before. Mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's other terms for it. Um, but the whole thing is, is, yes, exactly that. And this is what the world's most elite military unit teaches their team to calm themselves, mm -hmm. to slow down their heart rate, to be able to access their brain, to be able to think clearer, to be able to trust their like they do all these things mm -hmm. just with their breath. So I because we have we have that fight or flight instinct yep. that's still built in, still operating, and to manage that in our more if you're being shot at, you're you're in fight or flight mode, right? But yes. you know there are instances where <laughs> or when you get an email from your that. CEO, it's not helpful, right? It's yeah. not helpful in many uh, of the yeah. occasions we find ourselves in. And most times it's not. It, it's it's counterproductive. Yes, absolutely. It puts you in a, a terrible position where I end up replying with three letters and they send right. it to you know HR. <laughs> yeah, and and how many times have we, if we just had taken our taken our time, taken our breath, gone walked walked a loop, mm -hmm. walked the dog, come back, and then respond or respond to your kid or respond to your partner or whatever, right? right. It's like for anything in life, it's mm -hmm. just take that breath. Yeah. So we, we touched on a little bit. I think we're going to dig in a little more now. Um, you, you mentioned that you were very happy to work where you work because that, that culture is there to take care of yourself and to prioritize your, your own well being. Um, what is, what is, was it, was you've been with, and the, the way we know each other, full disclosure, is Janine was my rep pre-pandemic, and um, I've since relocated, unfortunately, and the company I work for is out of state, but we sh she'll still talk to me. That's right. <laughs> um, but you've been with Four Seasons for a while, so has it always been like this with that brand, or did you notice that it, that it changed and it started to shift? It has always been that way, to be honest. It started with Isadora Sharp when the company first started. It was founded on the Golden Rule. Great last Sad name. Sadly, unrelated. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Yeah, Isadora Sharp, he is amazing. And he founded the company on the Golden Rule, treat others as you would like to be treated. So a lot of these kind of trendy catchphrases that are out there now were really what the company has been built on. And no matter how many things, how many hotels we've opened, how much we've we've grown and 
taken on, you know, the the jet and the yacht and all these different things that we've stepped into, um, the core foundation has always been the golden rule. Um, I would say more recently, we have a really strong focus, which is still an extension of the golden rule, of really um, coming from a place f from heart, always from heart, right? So it's always about the person. It's always coming from a place of heart and a heartfelt connection. Um, it's also about empowering you to be your own person. So all of our employees, if they have an idea or if they have something that they want to create or implement, you know, for me, it was the wellness retreats mm -hmm. and um, over pandemic. Before the pandemic, we were doing instead of sort of um, happy hours and lunches and things, we started doing wellness meetups and meditations and sound baths and things for the exact reason mm -hmm. of, of seeing how many event planners were stressed out. And we thought, I, well, I thought this is going to be a great way to decompress. That moved into the over COVID doing online Zoom sessions, which you and I partnered on too yes, yeah. for your company, which was amazing. And then we moved that into the retreats where we're bringing different um, clients into wellness retreats at different four seasons around the world. Um, and that was fully supported. That was an idea that I had. It was um, just completely embraced and supported by the company. Um, seeing that it was an authentic piece of me, authentically in my heart, something that I wanted to bring to the table, and the company embraced that, especially since it was founded in the golden rule and, you know, being a heart-centered person. So, yeah. That's fantastic to hear. I, I think one of the, there's, there's a couple things I want to dig into. Also, um, my previous guest, we were talking about trying to bridge that gap internally with our meetings, right? And our events and trying to help our executive team understand why it's important and whatnot. Um, did, as you, as as they started to implement those things and, and we're gonna, I also wanna get your feedback on this. Um, were they tracking how many people were getting involved with this stuff? Were they, uh, we're gonna go left brain and talk data for a second, were they, was that how they were justifying the investments in these things and like why they decided to launch that property in Hawaii, the sen Sensei? Sensei. Sensei, yes. Because um, that was, that's obviously a whole nother level, right? So it's great that the wellness has been accelerated another uh, to, an, to another degree. Mm -hmm. So do you know how they were making that decision to do that? Did they did they track the data? Did they see how many people were getting involved? Anything of that nature? To open a property like Sensei, or yeah, just or just to, do more to, into to, to invest in wellness. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think wellness has been. On... I'm not. I'm not asking you as like a company spokesperson yeah, or no, anything. Okay. Like, <laughs> off the record. I, I, I think off the record on camera. <laughs> right, exactly. yeah, yeah, right. Um, I think wellness has has just been a growing industry in general. You know, across the board, we all see it. Um, it's especially f because of the three years that we've come out of. Um, I think that the I, the definition like we've been talking about on uh, here today of wellness has completely changed. It's no longer just about, you know, the spa. Um, and it's also non-touch, right? We, we looked at ways of doing wellness in non-touch ways. So that's also um, opened that up to more group experiences. Um, so I think that it's always been I think it's been percolating for a long time, and I think it's just going to become even even bigger, to be honest. And each one of our properties has its own curated wellness experiences. So if you're going to go to like Naviva, which is a tented camp in Punta Mita, that's going to have the Tamascal and a, and a shaman and forest bathing and connection to nature and decompressing through the access of nature. If you're going to go to Westlake, Westlake, you're going to go and you're going to have like a complete medical workup and you're going to have your blood work done and you're going to have your metabolism checked and um, you're going to have more of a fitness um, model, but then you're also going to have a therapist that's there, a psychologist, you're going to have a nutritionist, you're going to have a sleep specialist, you're going to have people with PhDs in these incredible modalities, you're going to have an energy healer, right? So depending on what you're looking for, like you said, it just depends. Sensei is, a, you can have both. Sensei is a property that has the nature, but then also has the science in there as well. So I think um, to your point, like it's not one size fits all and it's very specific to the destination which I really love too so if you want to go to Bali you know you can have more of that type of style 
And Lori, what kind of stuff are you seeing at, um, we got the four seasons pretty well covered over here. <laughs> um, I'm starting to see more wellness properties or like there's a uh, one in Orlando that I don't know if you've heard of called the wave, mm, which yeah. by the way, I had a transcendent no touch massage at four seasons, Orlando. Um, oh, I love that. It's the, the, the sound massage. Yeah, It was unreal. The vibrational massage. Yes. Look at you going with a different modality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, it, we stayed there during a conference. They were apparently, we hit them during a low spot and they're like, hey, we got some rooms that we're giving away at a great rate. Do you want to come in? And yes. Like, yes. Anyways, um, so there's a hotel that opened called The Wave um, and they are next to, like attached to them. And if you stay at the hotel, you get access to the um, Lake Nona Human Performance Center. And it's got a Deepak Chopra mm. spa. Oh. It's oh, got yes, an in indoor track. It's got about a billion dollars worth of rogue gym equipment in there, which is like four dumbbells. Um, it, it, it's like a three-story building with all kinds of stuff. Mm. So I'm curious because um, you see a lot more in way of other hotels. Are you seeing this category growing in uh, in hotels in general? I don't see it from a hotel, like an entire hotel chain or brand outside of... Or even a flag, maybe? Like, because Weston used to be like, we're the, the, the wellness brand. No, and like, and I, but I they haven't refreshed one of those in forever. Discussion of brands talking about what they can do to support us building it into our agendas. Because I think if you build it into your agenda, and I know again, you know, that can be a challenge depending on your ELT, your executive leadership team. And, you know, we've got to bring the data right. to demonstrate that if you build in some white space, you build in this opportunity to build community through whatever, meditation, sound bath, people actually retain content which is the entire no purpose shit. of why yes. you brought them together. Yes. And it's not a waste of time and you don't have to shove content, content, content down their throat because they're not gonna retain it. But breaking that habit in the C-suite is another challenge, right? As we all know. So I think what I'm seeing is hotels um, having conversations of how to support us within the hotel property. Um, whether, you know, I've done large events, 20,000 people, VMworld. We were doing, you know, some of this 10 plus years ago. Um, if you have a smaller event, smaller budget, it becomes difficult to provide a space for everyone, right? You've got to kind of pick and choose your wellness battles. And so I think it becomes, I've, I know what my audience wants. We've asked the question. Now, how can I work with that hotel, property, whatever it is, to implement that? Because again, Space is a premium. We all know rates are crazy right now. Um, it's a challenge. So I think finding, knowing exactly what your audience wants, how you can, and again, going to your partner, uh, which is my new favorite word these days, and we need to bring it back, um, and figuring out how to implement that within your agenda, within that property, um, I think is what's really top of mind for a lot of people right now. Do, do you, are you finding attendees' appetites have grown for this type of Absolutely, but I think it depends upon your audience, right? Yep. It's just like we have the business personas. We need to figure out what that business persona wants in their in Ooh, their wellness program. Should we start meeting personas <laughs> or attendee personas? Like, we, know, should, we should probably call it attendee it's personas. Yeah. yeah, it's the attendee persona. And what do they? And again, since it's such a personal journey, you're going to get everything, and you're not going to be able to take care of everyone. So, and some, you know, personas are going to be more of the I don't do that. And some are like, bring it on. So I think it's, uh, that also goes down to the, you know, my word of baby steps within an organization. If you haven't tried it, to try something small. And then I think weave it into the agenda. Don't just bookend it. Mm -hmm. um, weave it into the agenda. Give people a space. Um, and it's also a way you can build community. I mean, that's the word we've been using, right? Everyone's using community, this community. Build a community. If I did yoga with you, we were sweating and we made some ugly faces that builds a better connection than I just sat in a chair and we faced a screen. Mm -hmm. um, that is how you build community. And I think that's incredibly important. And people are starting to get that. Yeah. That that's what I took away from my time at when I was at 24 um, running internal meetings and incentives and whatnot. Um, every meeting every day. And obviously this is, this was a very, 
this is a very specific attendee right. persona yes. um, because they're all like old D1 athletes and stuff like that. Not old, former <laughs> D1 athletes. Sorry. But like they were all the club managers that would come in for a training and every morning started with a workout and they would be in there like it was practice. They're all hooting and hollering and yelling at each other and talking trash to each other. And, and but not in a hurtful, like in the most supportive, offensive way possible <laughs> to, to push each other. And they all left and they felt like they were on the same team after those right. workouts. And it goes back to the, what we started talking about, energy. Right? Yep. Yeah. You're creating energy together, nothing better. Yeah. And, you, and you don't know what you don't know, right? So it's, it's really about, like Lori was saying, these baby steps of just a little bit of exposure. Um, from what I'm hearing with our clients is people want we're in a really interesting time right now because people want to know they're a part of something bigger. Mm -hmm. They want to know they're making a difference. They want to know that what, you know, the incentive program that they're going to is not just about drinking and eating and being hung over. It's about community give back, sustainability. It's about um, wellness, connecting to community, allowing space, getting back from that program and not feeling like you need a vacation because you're so exhausted, mm -hmm. right? Um, and giving the, these people the opportunity to experience little things like, you know, forest bathing. Never heard of that. That is just what is that? I've had an right? outdoor shower in a hotel you room go, before. <laughs> you, right? That's and you know how great that was. So Yeah, and that was awesome. <laughs> and that was amazing. Um, but you you dabble and you expose and then it's uh, like, Tell us what, what forest bathing is just so that everyone oh, knows. Okay. I mean, you might forest as well. Bathing. Like, Good yeah, why not? Right. Forest bathing is, okay, so a perfect example of, of forest bathing was, um, you know, you, we went into, in, at Hualalai, we went to a sandalwood forest um, farm where we were, it, they were basically re-entering the... Um, sandalwood trees which are endangered to the island and so bringing a group into a forest like that it's basically um, an opportunity to connect to nature in silence and to meditate and to drop your nervous system so when you're in um, a forest or nature in general what scientifically happens is your nervous system will calm itself down because of the chemicals that your body lets off and so it's a way of connecting in silence to the forest and to the nature around you to calm your nervous system. So you really don't really need to do much, right, to be able to do that. And you just need to be there. And be still be and be present. And be still and be present. I mean, how many times have you sat by an ocean and you just feel completely recharged? Yep. The ocean lets off ions. Your iPhone lets off ions. There's positive and negative. When you go by an ocean, it neutralizes it. You feel even better at Hualalai when they come by and wash your sunglasses. And they have but. to spray them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, these, okay. it's these, right? And that's a group experience that doesn't cost anything. That Then you can go, you can have a group experience with 50 people in silence sitting in these incredible trees with a forest bathing guide who guides you through this meditation. You dip in and then you walk back and then you have this shared experience where people have had like tears coming out or these big shifts emotionally that they didn't even see coming and then you have a shared experience where you talk about it amongst each other right. and you've deepened your connection to, to yeah. each other mm -hmm. and to yourself exactly by the way who all is amazing <laughs> uh yeah. that's where we did our 24 incentive um mm -hmm. our team building and give back was we went into volcano national park and pulled weeds Amazing. but we gamified it so it was fun um it, it, so we've talked about meditation and we've talked about breath work i i want to share something that i I've, i actually nobody knows this about me and it probably will surprise some people um speaking to our first topic that we got to so during the pandemic i tried meditating and honestly uh nine times out of ten i would usually fall asleep i but when I woke up, I felt great. I would like, we, they, they gave us, a, I think it was a Headspace app and I would listen to it and it would just kind of lull me to sleep. And I was like, I don't know that that's, and, and I'm sharing this because I think it's important for people to hear. That was not my intention. My intention was going into it with an open mind and trying to experience it, right? So I made sure that I, I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to get from it. I'm like, everyone talks about it. All these famous people talk about it. Why don't I just try it? Much to your point, like just a baby step. 
didn't get my outcome that I was hoping for. I thought, I don't know, I was going to have some kind of experience or whatever. Astro travel or something. Y- yeah, like all of a sudden <laughs> I was going to meet somebody on Neptune that's going to tell me, I don't know. But um, but what happened is I did learn how it was kind of supposed to, how you were supposed to control your breathing. Fast forward a couple of years, uh, I did my first back in person event and I took this quite out there tour, um, even for me. Um, it was, I knew it was outside of my comfort zone, but it was in Sedona and we went to this, um, Tibetan stupa that's in Sedona. And I just, it was right after I finished an event. Um, and it was a big company wide high stress. And we went to this one and he said, we're, we're just going to sit here. You walk, I think counterclockwise seven times, and then you're going to hold this rock and you're going to meditate. And I was like, okay, I, I don't have the guide, but I'll, Walk my th- walk my way through it. I noticed that when I was breathing, I got to this point where I literally felt like I was exhaling out of my feet. It was the most bizarre, incredible, magical thing that I have ever experienced, where I felt like my whole body was just being uh, completely and totally energetically cleansed. Yeah, and I, I that was kind of my aha moment of. Oh, because, you know, I, I think I feel like as we get older, we realize how little we know mm-hmm. and we just go try to pursue more knowledge. And but then we are open to being wrong more often. Well, some of us are. And I, that was an eye opening moment where I was like, this is I don't know anything. This is amazing. And and, and um, it just I, I wanted to share that experience because we're having a, a very different level conversation mm-hmm. than like what most of these mm-hmm. have been. Um, I love that, the, the, the mm-hmm. forest bath. Um, do you think it's, so it sounds like the, the, uh, attendees appetites are shifting and do we think that's more just because they're so, they want more of what's at home when they go to an event, they like, they've, they've found what makes them happy at home. And when they go to a conference, they go to a meeting, they want to experience that. They want more of that. I would say from my perspective, it's because we are building habits, right? And wellness gives that benefit back to you. And I don't want to not have that, um, whether I'm on the road or not. So it becomes an an incentive within itself, at least it does mm-hmm. for me, um, to continue my practices, whatever they are, whatever I'm into at that moment, whether I'm on the road or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the attendees want the same thing. And I think as we are building more data around that benefit that it has, all the ones that we've discussed, then you know we're, our stakeholders are seeing that we should be building that into the agenda. Um, on your meditation challenge, um, I meditate every day, but I don't do the silent version. I need the guided meditation and I pick whatever that topic of the day, I have two apps, whatever I'm either feeling I need in my life. Um, Today on the call map, it was worthiness, like feeling that you are worthy of, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I I was like, oh, that works for me today. Um, And I think, you know, again, that's a good place for someone to start if they're, they're new to some of this is take five minutes, take 10 minutes, do a guided meditation where they instruct you how to breathe. There's a bunch of free ones on Spotify too. Totally, like how to breathe, um, what to think about. And you know, there is energy in in words, right? Mm -hmm. There are energy in words. And listening to those affirmations, uh, it works. Mm -hmm. The performance psychologist I just interviewed, I just shared this, snippet a couple days ago Mm -hmm. she said and i don't want to misquote her so i'm sorry if i do every thought you have creates a biological release Mm -hmm. it's it's energy thought is energy right it's brain waves it's energy and so that self-talk whatever it is whether it's negative or positive self-talk has a result yeah so yes we hear this word i'm gonna manifest and i'm gonna manifest (laughs) you know what it's real well, I know, but I think it, you know, people have kind of taken it to yeah. a different. No, I, I it wasn't. Become, it's almost becoming. No, honestly, I, I agree. It's become cliche, but the reality is what you say to yourself, what you say to your friends, and the words you use um, create energy and has impact. And that is true. 100%. Yeah. Well, it, it's good to see um, 
the the hotels understanding it. It's good to see the attendees. It's it's just great to see the evolution. Um, thinking back to where we were pre-pandemic, um, and this is wild speculation, which is my favorite kind. <laughs> Do you think we would be where we are now had the pandemic not happened? No, absolutely not. I I think that the pandemic was really what has shifted everything. I mean, your previous question about um, you know bringing wellness into things now. It's I think that people are expecting not necessarily to have wellness in their programming, but they're going into a new way of thinking and a new way of being because of the pandemic. You know, I think people's priorities have shifted what's important to them and what's important to their lives has shifted um i think the pandemic slowed people down enough to know oh this is actually what like a, a calmer state of being is so i don't know about you guys but when you first go back into um the convention hall meeting it's like nervous system on overdrive <laughs> because what used to be the norm you know this is something that i did all the time i went into these these environments all the time and it never affected me now it's like people have anxiety and stress and and it's um, a lot more intense because we had not that the pandemic wasn't extremely um, stressful in many ways but we had opportunities to to calm that nervous system down, working from home, you know, going out on walks. And I would, wanted to mention too with the meditations, if meditation is, sorry, I'm jumping for a second here, but if meditation, sitting on a pillow and meditating is not your thing, you know, go on a walk, meditative walks, mm -hmm. things like that. You know, a yoga class can be meditative or right. working out can be meditative, doing weights can be meditative. You know, so you find your thing that's like a bit of mm -hmm. a meditation for you, but um, but yeah, I do. I think that th I, I think that the pandemic has changed the way that we are living our lives and will I don't think we'll ever go back pre pandemic. Yeah, and I would say it's it's almost in some cases gave us permission to do that and <laughs> gave people like I, I now give perm I, I see the value because you okay. experienced it um, or I understand, you know, emphasize life is short. I forgot. And um, and I need to take care of myself and those around me. And so it gave us more of that permission because of it. I definitely mm -hmm. think it, you know, it sped up a lot of things, right, within this industry. Um, yeah. A lot, and I think that's definitely one of them. I, I feel like it was definitely a great reset. It changed. Um, quick, rapid fire question, uh, sidebar. What was, and you, you, you get to choose which one goes first. What was your first, of like, in-person event back? Uh, like in large in person and large is relative, of course. Um, Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Well, it was AWS reInvent, so there's large <laughs> in Las Vegas. Um, when was that? Was that November of twenty? November of twenty one. Twenty one. Oh right. Okay. So that was you know there was still you had to show vaccine all of the all of the fun. How did you feel? Do you remember? I'm sure you remember how you felt after the first you know day. What? I'm not the right. Oh, person. I saw you there. Yeah, I'm not exactly on the on the trade show floor. Yeah. I'm not the right person to ask because um, during COVID, I traveled the entire time um, mm -hmm. and you know safely, responsibly, all of that. But I really was on the road uh, before I could fly. Was traveling road trips, road trips, and then once we could get on a plane, I was gone and out. So I. Um, again, safety was important, but at the same time, I was like, let's get in there. I'm ready. Not to, uh, uh, there's no object, uh, objective here. Um, were you traveling just for fun to keep yourself from going stir crazy at home or were you working? Um, remote working in just but you a were different just... country or a different state as Got much it. as I, it, I could be allowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, because I remember my first event, and I was spent. But, but to be fair, like yeah. first of all, that's a lot. Vegas was a lot, and we had to wear masks on the trade show floors for AWS reInvent. And then I just got back from Vegas last night, and I had that moment where I looked across the casino. And I was like, "This is just, it's too mm -hmm. much. It's too much." Mm -hmm. I still, you know, it's just mm -hmm. too much. <laughs> yeah, mine was IMAX, 
and uh, oh. I think I show there's you there's another way to jump too. in. Yeah, yeah that cool is one. that is a deep end of the pool. Yeah. That was the deep end of the pool for sure. Yeah, and I I have to say, I mean, my lens on events has completely shifted. It just really has. It's just I I see events in a way of and again it depends on the event right if we're looking at a huge trade show it's very different from if we're looking at an incentive right but um i do a lot of incentive i work with a lot of um, companies that do incentives and i think that what we're looking at with incentives it's oh, so much of it is the experiential piece of it mm -hmm. right of it's no longer about the extravagant gifts and things. It's people want to be transformed. They want to have an experience that transforms them in some way that you feel like your entire energetic body just like slipped out of the bottom of your feet. <laughs> Such a trip. I like, I will never forget that feeling. How many years ago was that? Um, less than a year. Oh, okay. I was going to say, it was... but five years from now, you'll still be telling that story, yeah. right? So it's those types of moments that don't cost a lot of money and that have these incredible transformational um, opportunities where five years from now, you're still telling the story. And that's what I think we have the opportunity in events to do around wellness, right? To be able to offer these experiences where people just get shifted in some way, some unexpected way, and it transforms them or it gives them something that they can go, oh, I'm gonna remember that one little snippet of how to breathe that I learned in, at this meeting from this breath specialist mm -hmm. um, within a 45 minute, and I'm gonna carry that back into my life and I'm gonna share it with my loved ones and it's gonna shift me in some way. And those are the things I think with events now that we weren't thinking about before. And now we, can, we have this golden opportunity to bring that in and think of how thousands of people attend these events. We can. We can actually help thousands of people. To, and it's good business. And think it's about good business. if you had that experience at Brand X. You're going to remember that experience and Brand mm -hmm. X for the rest of your life. And that wonderful emotional attachment, which is, again, what brand marketers we want to do is attach you to our brand from an emotional perspective. That's it. I literally it's feel like I have both sides of my brain here. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, uh, but I agree. I, we, right? we, we all... In this industry, we literally have the power to change people's lives. Yeah. For the uh, good in this case, right? This is... Or the bad. Uh, we we want to do, do it for the good. Yeah, right. Um, but, you know, I think that's... But I think it's important that we, a lot of times, don't... We, we underestimate the level of impact that we can have mm -hmm. on our attendees. Like, yeah. we can re literally change them through something that happens. Oh, absolutely. If we shift out of sort of the... The usual, you know, um, programming and yeah, look the check at it, the box, check the box, yeah, right. look at it in a different way. And also, you know, in a time where budgets, let's face it, budgets are getting really scrutinized right now with the economy and everything that's going on. So these are things that are not expensive. Right. These are things that you can actually make forest bathing is free, right? <laughs> I mean, these are things that are just can do such transformational, educational, important um, connections and ROI and retainment back to the company, right. and it doesn't. You don't have to spend millions right. of dollars to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we get to speculate wildly again. Some more. Good. I love this. <laughs> My question is: What do you think? Where Where is all this going? In the sense of, what do you think five years from now? What kind of progress will we have made? What 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 things might be normal? Um, you know, one of the things that I think is pretty standard is running in yoga. It's always running in yoga. Join the 5K. Yeah, right. Um, uh, every conference I go to, I volunteer to teach a bodyweight boot camp for just people that want something a little more, um, that want to get a little higher of a heart rate, right? Um, what kind of things do you think w might start showing up? Uh, I don't want to even call them trends, but I want to I want to call them things that are, people are being more receptive to or starting to ask for more of. Um, I know I don't know if either of you are familiar with the Delos uh, Wellness for Meetings and Events certification. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Dominguez, who started Stay Well at MGM when he was there, um, he worked with this Delos organization. They've basically taken the Stay Well concept and moved it into an independent certification so that any hotel can essentially, can essentially get their team certified and it talks about 
bringing greenery into the spaces, bringing natural light into the spaces, what color the lights are during the day, water, air, all these elements, right? All the environmental aspects of it, right? Yeah, it's really about the learning environment and the meeting environment and the the space so much, Mm -hmm. Uh, not so much the individual, which Mm -hmm. I've been trying to convince him that I wanna help him on 102 Mm -hmm. of that certification, which Mm -hmm. is not about the space, but about the person. But with that, I'm just kind of curious what kind of things you have seen maybe pop up as one-offs that could potentially get some traction. And 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 for those people out there who want to know what the, I don't want to say the next thing, but the progression of this, mm-hmm. what what you've been seeing. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think five years from now, the technology is going to be a huge part, to your point, of uh, creating these spaces where people can have access to feel like they're in nature and the light and the aromatherapy that comes through and um, the, the body scans and things like that that are more medical based, I think is going to be huge. I, I do... I wouldn't be. I do see that going into the hotel spaces even more um, and having access to that. I also see these practitioners um, that are bringing in, like we talked about before, the ancient wisdom meets the modern day world. I think that there's a remembrance happening for people of um, these medicines that that were a part of the, the the planet and the earth that's coming back up. And people are curious about that and people's spirituality is opening up and people are curious about things. It's just so many conversations that I have with people that are say, oh, I don't normally tell people this, but I'm a total closet like astrologer or I, tell, you know, I, I do this or I do that. And um, so people are starting to become a little bit more because it's all becoming mainstream. People are becoming more curious about these different modalities. Um, so I definitely see that becoming Uh, even bigger than it is now and I do see I mean we're talking about doing we have guest practitioners at our hotels where we um, partner with some of the best practitioners with all various different modalities all over the world that stay at our property and you you can access them for a couple of weeks or something once you're there so um, I see that definitely becoming a bigger thing too and implementing that into the group space into the event space um, so yeah. Okay. I like it. Lori, how about you? Um, I think, I mean, five years from now, I think it becomes something of, you know, again, I would like to see us continue down this personalization, personalization pathway for the attendee, right? Um, the more information we can get from them and actually use it, um, in a positive way, the better. So, you know, what do you want to see at this event? Tell us, give it the feedback and make it happen. Sign up for your energy healer. Fantastic. That's great. Is that happening now? Not quite ready for that, I don't think. Um, Again, my perspective is mainly with tech, (laughs) with yeah, with tech events. And so that's not really happening in those actual business type uh, meetings. I think, again, different formats, um, different experiences, creating some white noise, some space for people to take in what they just heard, the content and digest it versus you know, blinding people with, you know, just content, 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 um, it's not, does not work. And I think we'll see even more of the data over the next five years that's just starting to trickle out now for all of the things we're talking about today and how it impacts our attendees. And I think that's going to help us break that C-suite barrier little by little. And I think that's exciting, frankly. Um, and it will change the look of the industry, uh, you know, that I've grown up in and it's amazing. I think it's fantastic. It's it's only positive for us. I think going back to my original thing, it, we need to do it for ourselves mm-hmm. so that we can support where this is going. Yeah. Um, gonna be hard to deliver that if you're, you know, a hot mess. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so you need to do that for yourself and then support it mm-hmm. and evangelize it within your organization. I will say to, to piggyback on that too, is from the hotel's perspective, I do think that, um, And we're already seeing it, but beautiful spaces in nature, you know, that is just going to become more and more. I think the commodity of being having access to these remote places in beautiful nature and have um, a space to hold these events. I think she's saying Vegas is going to start blowing out walls and putting trees in. Well, you know, I had this conversation about Vegas. (laughs) Sorry. Living walls. Sorry if I offend any Vegas uh, uh, industry folks, but um, you know, you go to Vegas and it's it's 
very dehumanizing on many levels, right? Clearly, um, it's not environmentally sound. You know, all of the water there, and uh, you know, I'm going to be curious where Vegas is in five years, quite <laughs> frankly. So, um, that's a whole different conversation. But um, yeah, I'm very excited to see where it goes. I, I'm really encouraged that it is a groundswell, and there people are changing and having conversations about it like this. I, I saw a really cool thing once where they they used projection mapping to create green space in the room. So they projection mapped trees and bushes and mm -hmm. like you were in uh, by a waterfall. Yeah. On so the whole wall was looked mm -hmm. like you were sitting next to a waterfall. So I, I think I think you're right. I think technology is going to come a long way. I think people are going to move more greenery inside spaces. Um, and I think people are. I think that's. People, if if people start tracking the data, which they should, because that's going to be their their use case. Because when they say, oh, "I got five hundred people to come to this property, this event, blah blah blah," and then they go to Vegas and they only get two fifty, you don't have to convince the C suite anymore. They understand. They're like, right. nobody wanted to come to this right. in this indoor basement ballroom. People wanted to go where they felt comfortable and um, that they were. It, in an environment that was conducive to their to their mind being open. I, I think one of the things that does most excite me is the science that's coming around uh, out and that one of the reasons I started this was to push that, um, frankly, <laughs> agenda event design needs to change. Like yeah. the way agendas are built are just, we, we all saw that Zoom or that like it was a Microsoft study of like your, the brain that's highlighted in different colors and yeah. what your brain happened after four consecutive meetings versus four <laughs> with breaks in between. That's it's it's real and yeah. um, that's I, I it's it's interesting that a, agenda is like the last piece of event design that people are willing to go in on because I think there's so much ego. From this, from the, from the executive team on. Well, I need to talk for sixty minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you don't, because guess what? I, I think most executives, though, if you knew them well enough to say, okay, you have a sixty-minute time slot, but everything in the first thirty minutes is the things you want people to remember, and everything in the last thirty minutes are the parts that you don't care if people remember. They would go, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> right, and you go. People don't have the attention. If you if you could talk to an executive on that level, you would change their mind. Right. Um, but it's hard because people think they need to talk. Um, well, and it's a risk, right? You're yeah. taking a risk. Because um, it's different. None of us are great at it. I mean, some are better than others. But, like, it is a risk, you know? And, we again, we're people pleasers. So it's hard to go up. I mean, I feel like we... Before the pandemic, we finally had a, a, ta a seat at the table that we were working on that for a long time. Seat at the table, and now we got a seat at the table, and now I'm supposed to tell you no. <laughs> um, but that is what having a seat at the table is, right? You so. wouldn't have a seat at the table if, you're, right. if your opinion wasn't valued and, and appreciated. So now you've got to say no, and, but then again, it becomes e so easy to say no when you say, here's the data. It, well, it's not, right. And it's not no, it's yes and. Well, of course. Sure. Sure, we can let no, you talk. Talking, what right, like. what part don't you want people to remember? Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> um, okay. I think we are actually at time. We went even a, a little wow. long. So this was this was amazing. amazing. This was so fun. Thank you guys. Wow. So fun. This was so fun. Really was. Uh, I hope I hope everyone enjoys this. Thank you, Dave. Um, thank the you great both. Great questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being so receptive to um, us at, me letting me ask questions that. Um, are uncomfortable. I think one of the things I took away, there was there was a lot that happened during the pandemic, but one of the things that um, the company I was at, we were, we were celebrating um, Juneteenth. And I asked, I, they brought in an external speaker and I said, I want to know what's appropriate versus appropriation. Mm -hmm. And how do I participate and be supportive of this while coming from a place of being naive. And so that's that's really I think I think there's a lot of people that use those terms towards something they don't understand around wellness really from a place of just um I I don't want to say ignorance because it has a negative an inherent negative connotation, but it's really being naive. You don't understand it. It's it's 
So you call it something because well, you're I like. I think Meh. Janine said you don't know what you don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to call it something else because I I don't I'm a, I don't know it and I'm afraid of mm-hmm. it and it doesn't make any sense. Well, it's to like me. they say, uh, science is just or magic is just science you don't understand. Exactly. And it's the same thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate Thank you the question. so much. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you at so the next fun. episode. <laughs> Thank you to the guests for joining us. Lori's out. Bye. <laughs> she got to go. All right. She didn't have lunch. Oh. <laughs> Self care. Oh, no, Self care. This is going in. This is going to be in the edit. I'm well hydrated. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for joining Return on Wellness. For help integrating these ideas, please scan the QR code. We sincerely hope you join us for our next episode of Return on Wellness.